起来！起来！ It's morning meeting for the drug squad at Qinglongchang. Here, Lieutenant Li Liuhua runs a 24-hour station where 70 officers rotate on three shifts. This is the front line in China's war on drugs flowing in from neighbouring Myanmar, and we've been given rare access to see their operation. This road is a big road. If it's big, it has a drug. It's just that it will come from the side of these situations. Our target is... The squad operates a checkpoint near the border to filter drug traffic. Lieutenant Lee shows how the main routes from Myanmar converge on that position, yet how more recently the smart drug runners have been getting around them via more isolated paths. Last year these officers played their part in the interception of nine tonnes of Burmese ice coming into the country. They're taking on some major business interests. It's Yunnan is a place that dreams are made of. With its lush forests, mountains, rivers and remote ethnic groups, it's the China of paintings and poems right there in front of you. Yet there's a side to this province not spoken of in the tourist brochures. It's the staging post for a major narcotics trade, flowing in to meet Chinese demand and lucrative markets beyond. We're on our way to the thin line between the drug runners and the rest of the world. Well, we're driving through what has to be one of the most beautiful parts of China and searching for drugs. We're here with the Yunnan Provincial Drug Squad, Mr. Shrey. Uh, he's showing us around and I'll just have a bit of a word to him. Hey, the Chinese police are patrolling a 4,000 kilometre border region here, and they know they're battling to keep it under control. We arrive at Qinglongchang to speak to them about the monumental task they've been given of trying to hold back the tide. This has become a very busy unit indeed, and we're about to see why. Here, Lieutenant Li Liuhua tells us that they can go for weeks without a bust. Yet sometimes we'll catch multiple drug runners in quick succession. China may be known for its media control, but he says we can film whatever happens while we're here. And straight away, they're into it. No nook or cranny is beyond suspicion. No bag of vegetables to be left unstabbed. No delivery too urgent to be delayed. 
And no family enterprise is beyond being questioned. Uh Black Audi pulls up and it draws immediate attention. One officer is responsible for picking suspicious vehicles, and this one has been identified as such. It's not the type of car so much as who's driving it. Girls in frilly dresses move through pretty quickly. Young men in groups are prime suspects. They also don't mind letting the police know what an inconvenience it is. This is not going to go smoothly. The police say drug-related criminal cases in China were up by 20% last year. According to their records, this involved 133,000 arrests. Critics of China's legal system would question not only the veracity of these statistics, but the procedural fairness of police work here. Yet a substantial increase in Chinese drug crime is also corroborated by international sources. The water finally comes and tempers cool a little. But the search of their car uncovers a secret compartment under the boot. It's rammed with cartons of cigarettes. These will all have to be checked. It also means their car is now up for a thorough examination. In the meantime, a long-distance bus has arrived from the border. And again, it's the young men who are asked to get off first to be scrutinised. Bags are searched and questions asked. In many parts of the world, even elsewhere in China, it would be seen as rather excessive for police to drag passengers off a bus and frisk them in this way, simply because they're travelling in a certain direction. But in Yunnan's drug belt, it's becoming standard procedure. One young man comes off the bus, and he's not like the others. He appears edgy, even as small items are taken out of his pocket, and as he's frisked from head to toe. This man is scared. He joins the line of fellow passengers who've been chosen for a scan in the X-ray truck. He looks around and won't meet the direct gaze of anyone, least of all our camera. After all the others have been checked, it's his turn. It seems they've spotted something on the X-ray. What they've found inside this man are three packets of methamphetamine, known on the streets as ice. Oh. This travelling man is now in serious trouble and he's having the situation spelt out to him pretty plainly. 
你知道了，我们从 X 光机看了，你给给粉丝写在下面。你跟我们老老实实说，现在给你机会了，好不好？呃，你赶快说了，嗯、这个事情反正这个设设备上都看出来了。呃，你你也跑不了了，你也不用紧张了，是吧？我好好的讲。His fellow travellers are still not back on the bus and within earshot of the conversation. The reason they've put this tape around him is because, you know, if the drugs come out, they don't want it to fall out the bottom of his jeans there. When you take the past, you need to talk to you. Yes, you need to talk to you. Yes, you need to talk to you. I don't know. I don't know. 你不知道你，我跟你说，你不要跟我们说假话了。你要赶快配合我们，重新处理。你呢，就是不爱跟别人硬说，毒品不是你的嘛。The young man slowly begins to realize that his fate has been sealed, and starts to open up, telling them that he made this run for the equivalent of five hundred dollars. 这么点钱你就跟他打了？是是犯罪的，毒品是犯罪的，饮酒毒品犯罪的，知不知道？知不知道？啊？你也不知道是毒品，那你为什么你把它塞进去？啊？ The、police have been asking him, how much did you pay for the drugs? What time did you insert them?、Uh, what's your final destination? Who are the people? Obviously, they're. Trying to do a bit of a deal with him, saying if you give up the people who've gotten you to bring these drugs up here, then we'll be more、uh, lenient on you. Most of the drug mules they're catching are hardly big-time criminals, and the police know it. These people themselves, their life is quite poor. They live in the area where the economic conditions are not very good. The most important thing is these people. I just said their culture is very low. 没有一些法律方面的一些知识，对法律这个观点非常淡漠，法律观点非常淡漠，啊，充当贩毒集团的这些马前卒。With nightfall, a new shift marches into place. The checking, searching, and questioning rolls on relentlessly. But as thorough and as persistent as they are, they'll never get it all. So you know that you men drill the dagger in, they are found to be in the same place. The majority of them are in the car or in the truck. The majority of them are in the car. For example, if they have the same areas, it is possible to see it from the top. Or if they have the same car or the car, they are in the car. In the car, they are less. 呃，人体里面呢，它少一点，因为它呃，就是、说它塞进去塞的不多，它的量不大。Commissioner Zhang Mingdong has been a drug squad police officer in Yunnan for 30 years. He's proud of how many drugs they've seized during his career. 这个量是非常大的，两百多吨，啊，可以想象一下，如果这两百多吨流到社会，流到内地省区，流到国际社会，它要造成多大的危害？ Police here stage mass burns of confiscated drugs. It's a public relations exercise to send a message that they're not a light touch. Many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of drugs go up in flames. But the syndicates know it's nothing compared to the profits to be made if they can transport these goods to lands far away, to places like Australia. Thank you.
Just take the Australian Federal Police figures for this year's intercepts coming into Australia from China. January, Perth, methamphetamine, 35 kilograms. June, Sydney, methamphetamine, 57 kilograms. Street value, $42 million. May, Sydney, liquid methamphetamine, 72 litres. February, Sydney, pure methamphetamine, 13 kilograms. February, Sydney, methamphetamine, 585 kilograms. Street value, $438 million. This last case was the largest ice seizure ever seen in Australia. There's Chinese organised crime working in, in Australia, uh, but equally they're working with Australian uh, nationals, uh, organised criminals. Commander Ray Johnson worked out of the Australian Federal Police Beijing station for three years. I think it's fair to say that the drug problem in China is growing. Yes, China is a, is a source country for the supply of, of an amount of drugs to Australia. Chinese drugs are being smuggled into Australia in garden hoses, bags of cleaning chemicals, ceramic tiles and shampoo bottles. For methamphetamine precursor chemicals coming into Australia, the major source is now China. For ecstasy precursor chemicals coming into Australia, the major source by quantity is China. We know this because Chinese and Australian police are conducting joint operations. At times they deliberately let the drugs go through in order to catch everyone involved. We might discover the export from China and uh, in cooperation with our Chinese partners we could uh, substitute with an inert substance and allow the, uh, the export to, to, to become an import into Australia and then all the while investigate the syndicate that surrounds that import. When a series of container ships arrived at Port Botany two years ago, it marked the beginning of a major China-Australia campaign to stem the flow of drugs between the two countries. Hidden in these shipments were more than 2,800 litres of the precursor chemical saffron oil, enough to make millions of ecstasy tablets. And according to the AFP, with a street value of around $500 million. In what was known as Operation Hitch, the materials were seized, arrests made, and police say it led to the dismantling of an alleged transnational drug importation syndicate. That operation resulted in the arrest of three people in Australia, and it ultimately led to the arrest of 23 people in China um, and the seizure of a further 500 litres. Now we're told barely a week goes by when criminal intelligence is not being shared between China and Australia, allowing Chinese police to make arrests as well. Our drug squad has even written a song trumpeting the team's success. Long Chung Drug Squad believes it has heroin basically under control. At least it's stable. But methamphetamine is another matter. In 2005, around 8% of drug busts in China involved ice. Now they're nudging 40%. It's an exploding market, and it's where these police are concentrating much of their energy. <laughs> On 
board the long-distance sleeping buses, the checking is going ahead in full swing. Bags are searched and documents examined with plenty of questions. A tap on the shoulder from a colleague, they've found something. This woman is asked to produce her ID, but doesn't have one. She's a Burmese citizen. A woman travelling with a small child clearly doesn't fit the profile of those the police have been homing in on. And yet she is carrying methamphetamine. You can see here somebody else has been caught carrying drugs. They've come in from Burma and they're hiding hiding the drugs in some sort inside some sort of again it looks like like a condom or something like that uh, and they've been hiding them underneath the mattress of this bus police are now asking where they got this from just the details of where they intended to take them the woman and child are taken off the bus. She'll be questioned, but either way, normally in China, any run-in with the law means you're going down. Can we have a look? She shows us the three packets of ice she was attempting to deliver to the regional capital. This seems to be the standard amount that poor couriers are asked to take. We're actually going to try and ask you a couple of questions to get translated through the local police here. Uh, yeah, so, so a friend has gotten her to do this. She hasn't, they're, obviously they're poor people. And then someone's given them 5,000 yuan to bring these drugs across the border. That's around 900 Australian dollars. I'm just, just trying to establish if lots of people from their, their village actually bring drugs across the border. It seems they do. So she's done this before herself. So she's successfully brought drugs across the border before and this is the second time she's done it. The police say that pregnant women or women with small children are favoured to act as drug couriers. It's not only because they look less suspicious. This woman tells the police that she's still breastfeeding her child. Under the Chinese system, that means she won't be sent to jail, at least for the moment. later told that she is to be sent back to Myanmar until her child is of a certain age. Then apparently the Burmese police will hand it back over to China to face trial here. As for our young men pulled over earlier by the police, they were also carrying a sword and a large knife in their car, but no drugs. And with that, they're allowed to go. Yet this man's life has come to a devastating crossroads before our eyes. 
he's looking at a minimum of 10 to 15 years in jail. As China's drug trade flourishes, there are many like him running the gauntlet here. Poor people taking the quick money so others can reap the profits. And try though the police might to plug the holes, in their hearts they know that the tide is well and truly coming in. <laughs>